Hi there, welcome to Yoga Physio Zone. I'm Sinead and this is number nine in the Beat the Bug yoga series. Today is all about hamstrings. So hamstrings are these muscles here, the ones at the back of your thigh, and they're obviously really important muscles. They're your sprinting muscles, if you're jumping as well, there's a fair bit of the spring comes from there. They're power muscles. Um, but they're also really connected to all the muscles kind of they're they're in a team of muscles that include your calf muscles some of your foot muscles here the hamstrings are themselves then your lower back muscles your upper back muscles muscles at the back of your neck they're kind of in a, in a team of muscles that kind of work along the back part of your body and then what goes on is also influenced by what's happening in your groin muscles and in your trunk and everything so like everything else it's all connected. But anyway, so today we're going to do a short hamstring class. Hopefully about 20, 25 minutes maybe. We'll see how we go. So come to lie on your mat. Nice and flat. Now, if you have a belt, you can use a belt for this. And uh, just to say, if you have a small stool as well, you might need that for a little bit later in the class. So first of all, just come to lying on the mat and just shimmy your hips a little bit and your shoulders and then just come to lie nice and flat and take a couple of big breaths in and try and fill the lower half of your lungs and again deep breath in and out and again Deep breath in, filling your lower lungs and then breathing out. Okay, so we'll start with the right leg. I'm going to get you to bring your right leg up 90 degrees. The knee is up off the mat, the foot is up off the mat. Get your two hands around the back of your thigh and then just hold in that position make sure your shoulders and the back of your head stay on the mat and then just straighten out that right hamstring as much as you can. Now you'll find, particularly if you tight neck muscles like I kind of do, is that your chin will want to kind of like look up towards the ceiling. Try and keep it down, okay? And that kind of stretches the whole back of your body. And um, just go to, you know, a fairly you know, moderate stretch. Don't ever stretch into pain. And if it's early morning for you, just go nice and easy. So playing around with straightening and bending. If you can, keep your elbows straight. And you might find when you're stretching out the hamstring there that you might feel your shoulders being pulled down away from your ears, which is good. Keep that chin tucked in and breathe. Now if you can, you'll find that when you point your toes, there's less of a stretch than if you pull your toes towards your, your face. So that's just kind of adding a, a calf stretch to the equation. And back down. Lovely. So there we go. Right hamstring just stretched out to start with. And just uh, also a little stretch to the rest of the, uh, the I suppose, your back body, the, the part of your body that is all your hamstring, calf, glutes, upper back, lower back, okay? Now let's get the left leg again, hands around the thigh, and then straightening out, playing around with straightening, and you can see on me, I'm really, my chin really wants to come up off the ground there, but no, okay? Keep the chin in as much as is possible. People who are really tight might find that they have to put a small pillow under their head if your back body is really tight, you might have to do that and that's okay. Don't force yourself, play around with what is good for your body. And then depending on the time of day or depending on whether you're tired or not or what you've done that day, you might find it easier or harder to straighten that leg. And as you can see, I do struggle a bit with hamstring flexibility. Okay, now, Coming back down, I'm going to get you to roll over onto your side. 
It doesn't matter which side because we're going to do both. And we're going to actually do a side plank. The reason I'm doing this is, in my experience, an awful lot of people who have tight hamstrings have you know, weakness further up along their chain, in particular in their side back muscles, the ones at the side, and also the ones um, of their lower back. So let's just do a small bit of strengthening there. So you can keep your knees bent for this one if you want, or you can straighten them. Keep your elbow under your shoulder and then lift up. Lift your hips up off the ground. Engage your shoulder muscles really strongly. And breathe. And breathe. Five, four, three, two, one, and back down. So keeping the knees bent is a bit easier. So do that if you need to, okay? Rolling over onto your tummy just for a sec, and then let's do the same on the other side. Elbow under your shoulder, knees bent or straight. And then lifting up the hips. Engaging your shoulder muscles really strongly. Breathing and five, four, three, two, one, and back down. I'm always wobbling a bit. It's my left one, it's my weaker side. Okay, so over onto your front, and I'm gonna get you to slide down nice and flat. You can put your forearms out in front of you, head forward on your forearms and then what I want you to do is just get your right leg and so you're going to relax your left leg onto the, the mat. Right leg is really really straight and strong. You're going to really contract your, your front and back muscles and you're going to point your toe towards the ground and then lift that leg up with a straight knee Lifting it up, five, four, three, two, one, and back down. Alrighty, let's do that again. Contract everything, make that leg really strong. Point your toe towards the ground and lifting up. Straight knee, five, four, three, two, one. And back down. And once more, making that right leg really straight and strong. Point the torus towards the ground. Lifting the whole leg up off the ground with a straight knee. Five, four, three, two, one, and back down. Okay, we're going to do that with the left. So again, relax your forehead onto your forearms. This time the right leg is totally relaxed. Left leg is gonna, you're gonna make it really straight and strong. Pull up on the kneecap, point the toes down towards the ground. Lift up that right leg. Five, four, three, two, one, and back down. You'll usually find one is easier than the other. Stronger one is easier. <laughs> this side is a bit easier for me. And again, lifting up, pointing the toes towards the ground. Kneecap really, really pulled up into your thigh. Five, four, three, two, one, and back down. And you'll feel that work in your lower back muscles as well, as well as your hamstrings. So again, Left leg point, make that leg really straight and strong. Point the toes towards the ground, lift the whole leg and thigh up off the ground. Five, four, three, two, one, and back down. Well done. Okay. So that was a bit of a hamstring strengthener. Okay. Sometimes people with furry, tight hamstrings, as well as having kind of weak back muscles, can actually have weak hamstrings. So sometimes People often think, oh, it's really tight, it must be very strong. And sometimes that's the case, sometimes it's weak. So it really does depend. So no harm doing a bit of strength in there as well. Okay, so we're on all fours and we're going to do some downward dogs. Downward dogs are great because they kind of work just about every part of you. But our focus today in our downward dog is going to be strengthening, is lengthening our legs actually. Okay, so get down onto all fours. 
Remember the weight is on the base of your fingers, particularly your index finger and your thumb. So walk your hands, one hand's breadth forward of your shoulders, so then in front of your shoulders. And you're really pressing into the base of the fingers now, okay? The middle of your fingers can lift up a little bit if you want. So you're kind of clawing the mat like that, okay? Tuck the toes under. Now roll the upper arms around so that the creases of your elbows are facing forward. That will get the arms nice and strong. And then lift your bum up off the ground and then push, push it away from you. Keep the arms engaged, okay? Now, see if you can drop your heels and look back through your ankles. So the arms are an important part of it, but really try and get your hips as high as you can away from your hands. You're pushing those hands into the mat, keeping the arms strong, pushing the hips towards the sky and then dropping the heels. Breathing. Two. Three, and back down. Okay, well done. Lovely. Move the hips around a little bit. It's a great stretch for the entire back of your body. We're cleaning the hamstrings. Let's do that again. Press into the bases of the fingers, straighten the elbows, roll the upper arms around so the crease of the elbow is facing forwards. Tuck the toes under. Press into the hands and feet and lift the bum up off the ground and push it away from you. Push it away as far as you can and as high as you can. Then drop your heels and look back through your ankles. Now really try and tip your bum up towards the ceiling while you drop your heels. Sometimes you'll feel a hamstring, sometimes you'll feel calf, but what we're doing is we're just stretching that entire back body. Lovely. Now staying in this position, let's go into three-legged dog. Let's see if you can lift your right leg up off the ground, keeping the arms straight and strong. Keep the toes pointed towards the ground. Good. And back down. Same with the left leg. Now balancing on three limbs. Keep the arms strong. Lift that left leg up behind you. Keep the toes facing the ground. Back down. Lovely. and come back onto all fours. Well done. Okay. Now, we're going to give a nice hamstring stretch in a kind of a kneeling position. So what I'm going to get you to do from all fours is bring your right leg forward in between your hands. Okay. And then you can shimmy your back knee, your left knee, just a little bit back. So here you are, you're kind of in a, a lunge position. You can relax the back foot, try and keep your shoulders relaxed. And then with your front foot, your right foot, just see if you can shimmy it forwards a little bit, okay? And then with your hands, walk your hands back. So you are transferring your weight onto that back knee, which will straighten out front leg. So your right leg is now straight. You're putting weight onto the left knee, which is the one behind you. And that is stretching out your hamstrings. And if you pull your toes up towards your face, you get a really nice stretch. And you can wiggle your foot left and right to get different aspects of the hamstrings. There's a few different muscles there comprising the hamstrings. So by rolling leg inwards and outwards you can kind of get a different a different different hamstring to kind of uh, to stretch out for you okay if you want to go a little bit further shimmy your back leg a little bit more away from you and then walk the hands back until you find that that front leg is more or less straight now if you can't straighten it, that's fine. Just whatever you feel is the maximum you can do while feeling a stretch kind of on the back of your thigh, in other words, your hamstring. And then when you feel, ooh, I've had enough, don't forget to breathe, because breathing is really important. And then if you feel you can get a bit more out of it, you can just kind of maybe just play around with pulling your toes up towards you and bringing them down, okay? So go easy on that. 
okay? Just keep it to a reasonable comfort level, okay? Lovely. And let's swap legs. So we're back to all fours. This time we are going to get the left leg up in front. Left leg is now between the two hands. I'm going to shimmy the right knee just a little bit further away from me, okay? And then I'm going to shimmy the front foot, my left foot, just a little bit forwards. Ooh, I can feel that. Okay, now walk the hands away from my front foot and back towards the middle of my mat. So I'm now transferring my weight over onto my left, sorry, my right knee, which is the, the knee that's behind. And then that kind of straightens out, or as near as you can, straighten out the front leg, your left leg. Pull your toes up towards your face. Now that's about as far as I can go, but I kind of feel, do you know what, I can go a little bit more. So again, maybe if I can shimmy that front foot a little bit forward, a bit more. And again, walking my hands back gently so that that left leg straightens out. And then just give me a stretch in that position. There's always one that's a bit easier than the other. I feel it a bit more, I can just pull my back knee a little bit more. Just play around with that. And again, rolling the leg inwards and outwards, that front foot inwards and outwards, really rotating the hip, which is getting different parts of your left hamstring. Great. Gently come out of that. Shimmy your front foot back towards your hands. And you are back to base. Let's do one more downward dog for good luck. Okay. All fours, walk the hands one breath forwards. Weight on the bases of your fingers, roll the upper arms around, tuck the toes under, lift the bum up, push it away, drop the heels, and breathe. And really try and stick your tailbone up in the air. Lovely. And back down. Okay, so. Hope you're feeling that working your, your hamstrings. I am. So for this one, if you have a small stool or a chair or something, you can just pull it. You won't need it for all the poses, but just for some of them. We'll just leave that there just in case you need it. And we'll come up into standing. So here we are standing. I'm just going to change my camera angle. As usual, someday I will get right equipment but not yet okay so here we are now we're going to start in pyramid pose so we're going to put our right leg forward so I'll face you first of all right leg is forwards the left leg is about two feet behind two and a half feet behind my right foot is actually facing you facing the front my left foot is facing about 45 degrees so if I show you me from the side Right foot is facing forwards, left foot is kind of facing about 45 degrees, facing kind of the corner there, okay? Now, roll your hips so that the two hip bones, these ones here, what people call the hip bone, that they're facing forwards, okay? So that'll involve rolling the back leg, the hip forwards, and the front hip kind of backwards, okay? So, hands on the waist, and then looking forwards with a straight back, bending in the middle, bending at the hips, bending at the hips, bending at the hips, bending at the hips, good. And finally, you are looking at your front big toe, okay? Keep the hips facing forward. So in other words, those two kind of hip bones, those ones that kind of stick out from the front of your, your kind of pelvis, they are facing forward so they're not kind of rotating to the side but they're actually facing forward so again these bones here they're facing forwards okay so that's pyramid pose lovely it's a really good one that stretches out your front hamstring if now think of that front one so it's your left your right one should i say so your right one is facing forward so roll that right hip Okay, pyramid pose gives you a really good stretch to that front hamstring. Great stuff. 
Okay. And coming up with a straight back. Great stuff. We are now going to go into tree pose. So keeping that front leg where it is, I'm just going to move my back so you can see me. We are now going to stand. We're going to contract everything in our right leg so it's really straight and strong. We're going to lift up our left leg. We're going to do funky tree. So our left leg is lifting up to kind of about 90 degrees like that. And then you can lift the hands up as well. Okay? So that's really, really straightening the standing leg. Okay, making it really, really, really strong. Pull your lower belly up towards your belly button, contracting the hamstrings, contracting the quads, tighten that kneecap. Lovely. Okay, so you're coming back down. You can put your leg momentarily onto the ground. This is where your stool comes in. You may or may not need it. We are going to do a kind of a version of Warrior Three. So again, you're standing on that right leg. And then you can put your hands onto your little stool like that. And then you're just going to lift that left leg up behind you really strong. So you're keeping that standing leg really, really strong while trying to get that left leg behind you. But that, the challenge with the left leg is to keep the toe looking down at the ground and not rotating outwards. And that really works both hamstrings actually. The standing hamstring is working really strong to kind of stabilize you and the other one, the one up in the air, is actually to, is really contracting to lift that leg up off the ground. Great stuff. Okay, and coming back down with the left leg, let's give our hamstrings a bit of a treat. Go and face the side of the mat. Both feet are facing the side of your mat, okay? Widen your stance, lovely wide stance. Now you can roll, you can bring your big toes when they are facing, they're pigeon toe when they're facing each other. And straighten the legs, hands to the waist with a straight back. Look forwards, look forwards, look forwards. Eventually you'll be looking at the floor, eventually you are looking down at the ground. Drop your head, relax the neck. Now you can bring your hands to the ground if they'll go or else bring them to wherever they'll go on your thighs or on your shins, okay? And in this position, roll your weight, picking up your feet, rolling the weight onto the inside of the feet, the big toe side of the feet. And you might find that that actually, you can feel a little bit more length coming in your upper hamstrings, kind of nearly up near your sit bones. So try and actually get your your bum as high up towards the sky. So in other words, your sit bones, if you're trying to kind of put those facing up towards, you know, as high as they'll go. All right, relax the head. I'm really feeling a nice stretch in your hamstrings if you want, you can kind of widen your stance or you can bend your elbows and go a bit lower. Trying to play around with keeping your knees straight if you need to bend them fine. But that's a really great one for the backs of the hamstrings. Great job. Then looking forwards, you can bring your hands back to your waist. Keep the knees straight and coming back up. Yeah, I can definitely feel that. The backs of my thighs. Okay, let's do all of that to the other side. <clears throat> I'm going to move my, my chair to the other side. So, we're going to start with pyramid pose. So this time, I'm going to face you, but you can face the side of your mat. You're going to have your left leg in front, right leg is behind and facing at 45 degrees. So, left leg facing the front of the mat, right leg is behind. You're going to twist so that the two bones, those anterior Iliac spines are facing forwards, both of them equally, and looking forwards, bending down so that you are now looking at your front big toe. Keep your pelvis facing forwards. So those two, what we call hip bones, but aren't really, 
one at the front of your pelvis that they're actually facing. That's a really nice one for the front hamstring. Breathing into it, into the lower ribs. And with a straight back, coming up, looking forwards, and we're going to go straight into tree. So standing on that left leg, make that left leg really straight and strong, contract your bum muscles, contract your kneecap, <clears throat> and then lift the right leg. And it is going to come up to 90 degrees. And if you can, you can raise the arms up above your head. Really contract that standing leg. Really contract it straight and strong. Well done. Bring that right leg back down momentarily onto the ground. And get your breath for a minute. And then standing on that left leg again, really straight and strong. You are going to kick that right leg back behind you and reach forward. Put your hand on the stool, okay? Now that right leg that's up in the air, keep the toes facing down onto the ground. And if you want to, if you've done warrior three before, you can stick your hands out in front of you to counterbalance it, but it's easier for a lot of people to put their hands on something. Keep the toes of that back leg facing down towards the ground. Lovely, and come back to standing, two feet on the ground, let's face the side of the mat again, let's do another wide leg forward fold, parsarita, oh I've forgotten, I've forgotten my, my Sanskrit, shame on me, anyway we're going to turn both toes to face each other, hands to the waist, look forwards, look forwards, look forwards, look forwards, look forwards, look down at the floor, look down at the floor, finally, you can get your hands onto the floor or as near as they'll go, so you can put them onto your both thighs or both shins or wherever, as long as you feel that you're kind of in a semi-rested position, okay? Roll your weight onto the inside of your feet, the big toe side, that often gives an extra bit of a stretch to the upper hamstrings near your sit bones. Head relaxed, neck relaxed. Play around with straightening and bending your knees. If you can bend the two or straighten the two of them, great. If you can even bend your elbow and see if you can get a bit lower. See if you can get your hands back in line with your feet, which kind of places your weight onto the front of your feet a little bit more and it places an extra stretch on the hamstring. So whatever version of this feels good for you, just do it so that you can get a nice kind of a stretchy feeling into your hamstrings, but that you're not overdoing it, okay? Lovely. Hands back to the waist with a straight back, come back up. Well done. Just finished the standing series. Okay, let's do a couple of sitting ones to finish. I'm going to readjust my angle of my camera, so just come to sitting on your mat. I'm going to do a couple of nice hamstring stretches to finish. Okay, so here we are. That last pose we did, let's do the sitting. Okay, so nice wide base. Sit on your sit bones. If you can't, you need to have the feet not so wide apart so you can sit on your sit bones or sit against a wall so you're supported, okay? But you need to have a fairly straight back when you're doing this, okay? And nice wide legs and then just walk your hands down as far as you can. And looking forward, relax your shoulders. See about straightening your knees, maybe one knee at a time, you can straighten maybe two of them together, okay? If you can, pull your toes up towards you, but don't worry if you can't. If you have to keep your knees bent, that's fine. Whatever version of this feels good. If your legs have to be closer together so that you're kind of doing it that way, even if the knees are bent, doesn't matter. As long as you're feeling some bit of a stretch along the hamstrings and that your back is nice and straight, as I said, do it against your wall if you need to. Chest is facing forwards. That's a really nice hamstring stretch. Stretches a few other things too. And 
Let's just make that into another stretch. So this is kind of a Uttanasana version of Uttanasana, a sitting version. So you've just got straight legs in front of you. You're sitting on your sit bones, propped against a wall if you need to. Walk your hands down along your legs. And then see how far you can go. You can get down as far as your big toes and hook your fingers around them. That's fine, but try and keep your back straight as you do it. You're sitting on your sit bones. You're bringing your chest forwards, dropping the shoulders away from the ears. Again, play with straightening, bending those knees, dropping the shoulders. When you relax your upper body and breathe, you sometimes you feel a bit of a stronger stretch in your hamstrings. When we're down the back of the thighs, that's good as long as it's not too stretchy, no pain allowed. Well done, folks. Half an hour up. Wow, that flew. Okay, so just to finish up with, back to the stretch that we started with, lying down on the mat. And we're going to do one leg, stretching it out. You probably feel that it's a little bit more stretchy than when we started. Okay, you can roll the hip, which makes the toes roll in and out. Lovely. Then the other leg lifting up and again trying to straighten. Lovely. And if you want to, you can do the two legs together. Get the two hands behind both knees. Actually, one hand that's both hooked around each thigh and then trying to straighten the two of them together. Okay. And if you can, you can get your toes, your index finger hooked around your toes. But don't worry if you can't. This is where a belt comes in if you have a belt. You can kind of pull the belt over your feet. Let me just show you. The belt. So that way you can control it. This is a nice safe position for your lower back as well because it's well supported. Okay. And coming to lie down on your back. And give yourself a nice shavasana now, guys. On some nice music, roll the legs outwards, shoulders away from the ears, head and neck relaxed, and then do give yourself about five minutes of a shavasana while I go about my business. But give yourself that few minutes just to uh, soften out and relax, and if you want. You can just look up my video on Shivasana. I'll do about a 10 minute Shivasana, um, but you can play after this. But anyway, well done. That was your hamstring workout. Um, talk to you soon.